Hi, I'm Ellen from the Chili Dog. I'm getting ready to close the second pocket on my fourth ridge pocket scarf. So today I'm going to show you how to do the mattress stitch. The mattress stitch is used to seam the side edges of two pieces of knit fabric together. As I explained in an earlier video for the neatest results, when you use the mattress stitch, it's really important that you have not slipped the first stitch of the row when you are knitting your fabric. To sew the seam together, you are going to need a length of yarn and a yarn needle. Usually, I would use the same color yarn that was used to knit the fabric. Today, however, to make things a little bit easier to see, I'll be demonstrating with a contrasting yarn. Before we start stitching, let's talk more generally about the process. As we join two pieces of fabric together with the mattress stitch, we'll be looking for a very specific landmark. The horizontal bar that connects the edge stitches to the stitches next to them. And I have this very large scale sample to show you what I mean. So on the first fabric, we're looking for that horizontal connector between the column of edge stitches and the next stitch over. And it's easiest to see if I start here at the top. So here's this first horizontal connector and then a space and a horizontal connector and a space and a horizontal connector and a space and so on down the fabric. And we'll take a look at the other edge just so you can see it from the other side. Again, the edge stitches and this column of stitches next to it. And we're looking for those horizontal connectors and then a space and a horizontal connector and then another space and a horizontal connector and a space and a horizontal connector and a space. Those columns of spaces are where we're going to insert our needle to sew the seam together. Now let's determine the path we'll follow as we're stitching. So I have a graphic representation here of our fabrics. So we have the edge stitches here at the center, those columns of spaces where we're actually going to be inserting our needle, and then the rest of the fabric here out to the side. It doesn't matter whether you begin seaming from left to right or right to left, the overall process is going to be the same. So I'm gonna just start from right to left. So we start in this first space and go straight across to the first space on the other side. And then up one space. We'll go back across the seam to the space that our yarn has already occupied and then up one, across the seam to the space the yarn just occupied, and up, across the seam to the space that the yarn just occupied, and up, and so on until we reach the top of our seam and our two fabrics are joined together. Now let's start stitching. When you do the mattress stitch, one side of the seam is very smooth across the join and the other side has a noticeable ridge. Usually the smooth side is on the right side of your fabric. However, for this particular pattern, I like how it looks with the ridge on the right side. So I'm going to stitch it shut that way so that the ridge is on the outside of my fabric. I have the two edges that I'm seaming together side by side. And as I was knitting, I clipped a locking stitch marker at the fold row where my seam is going to begin. So it's easier for me to see where to get started. Now let's zoom in as we start stitching. Some knitters like to anchor their yarn at the beginning of the seam. 
But for right now, I'm going to wait so that I can show you a neat little trick. My needle goes through the first space on the right hand side, through the through to the first space on the left hand side, and I'll pull my yarn through and leave a little bit of a tail so that I can weave it in later. Then I'm going to look at the edge. I'm going to go up to the next space across that connector bar, across the seam, and then back through on the right side the same space that my yarn just came out of. And pull the yarn through. I'll go over one connector bar into the next space on the right side across the seam and then back up through the same space that my yarn is already in on the left hand side and pull the yarn through and you can see as I'm working here I'm not pulling the yarn super tight I'm leaving these loops so that it's easier for me to identify where the yarn is coming through, which space it's, it's occupying. So I'm going to go over one connector bar and up through the next space, across the seam, and then back through the same space that the yarn is occupying on the right hand side. Pull the yarn through, over one horizontal bar and into the next space, under the seam, and then through that same stitch that my yarn is occupying on the other side. And I'll just keep going in this manner until I've seamed up some of my stitches. I've worked the mattress stitch for a couple of inches and there's no denying everything looks like a hot mess right now because I still have a gap between my fabric edges and I have all these loops hanging out. But let's look at how everything literally pulls together. All I have to do to tighten up these stitches is to pull each end of my yarn in opposite directions and everything just neatly tightens right up. All those loops disappear and my seam is just lovely. You'll notice that at this point my yarn can actually slide through the seam in either direction. I can pull it. You'll also notice that even though I've used this very highly contrasting yarn to create the seam, it's virtually invisible on both sides of this ridge. I really have to pull things open so that you can see that yarn. And if we look on the inside of the fabric, the ridge is smooth, my stitches line up nicely across the seam, and that dark red yarn is invisible. After I've completed stitching my entire seam shut, I'm going to make sure that my fabric isn't bunched up along that yarn that I've been sewing with just by kind of using my fingers to straighten things out so that I have a nice straight non-bunchy edge and then I'm going to anchor the ends of my yarn. And I'm going to start with this yarn tail that we used at the very beginning of the seam and let's zoom in to see how it all works. So I need to pull the yarn tail through to the wrong side so I'm just going to take it down 
close to where the yarn is coming out and pull my needle through. So now it's on the wrong side. We'll open up and look at the wrong side. And now I need to anchor this yarn so that when I pull it, that the whole seam doesn't get accidentally pulled out. And to anchor it, I'm just going to find a stitch leg and go around that stitch leg a couple of times with the yarn. And that way you can't pull out the seam accidentally. And once it's anchored like that, I could just weave in this tail on the wrong side like normal. And for this project, I'm actually going to be using the same piece of yarn that I stitched this seam shut to tack across the top of the pocket. So when I get to the top of the seam, I am going to leave my yarn tail where it is. I'm not going to anchor it because I'm going to do just a little bit more stitching with the same piece of yarn. I hope you enjoyed learning how to do the mattress stitch to create a very neat and tidy seam. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your knitting friends. If you'd like to try this technique in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for my fourth ridge pocket scarf. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!